Let's solve the Advent of Code 2021 Day 16 puzzle using Prolog. This puzzle asks us to implement a parser for a simple binary packet format, and I reached for Prolog here because it has excellent support for both list data structures and pattern matching. When you hear that combination, you might think Haskell, OCaml, or ML, but Prolog got there first. Prolog is a very different language from the ones we've used so far, and we'll use it via the Swish online Prolog playground. In Prolog, a program is a set of logical assertions, meaning rules that are true. And then you write a query, which is, looks like a logical assertion, but with some undefined variables. And Prolog finds all possible settings of variables that will make the query true. For example, here I've defined a rule called hex, which is true for each of the samples from the puzzle statement, and then also for the long input that we've been given. So if I write the Prolog query hex of h, then Prolog cycles through the possible values that will make that statement true. And it's showing us the strings, but as lists of code points, which is not terribly useful to us. So we'll change it to say, also find a string s, so it satisfies string cares of s of h. And that shows us the actual string. Okay, we probably don't wanna see the, the h values again. So let's write a new rule. We'll say parse s is true if hex h is true and string cares of s comma h is true. And now we can just say parse s here. And we just get the hex values. So that's good, that's a start. So now the first thing we wanna do is turn the hex into bits. And as a warm up, let's turn it into decimal digits. So right now we had code point values for the letters and the numbers, but let's actually turn it into zeros through 15. So a hex digit is true for H and D if H is less than or equal to nine, whoops, nine, the character nine, and D is H minus the character zero. Or it can be true if H is bigger than or equal to the character A and D is H minus A plus 10. All right, let's just check this. We say hex digit. Uh, actually, it's kind of hard to check because we don't have the, um, the character codes. Well, we can say hex digit 51 and D. And it will tell us that's a three which is correct. All right, um, so now let's do strings. We'll say hex digits, plural, of an empty list is an empty list, and hex digits of a longer list, h followed by h1, is d followed by d1, if hex digit h is d is true, and also the tails match. Let's see, so now we should be able to say parse, but here we'll say hex digits hd. And we'll add d as an output from parse. Prolog doesn't actually care which of these are outputs or inputs, it kind of figures it out. And we'll say parse sd. And it says here, d2 fe28 is 13, 2, 15, 14, 2, 8, which is exactly what we want. And the others are working too. Now, of course, we don't just want digits, we want the actual bits but we can just write a version of this that does bits. Empty list is still empty. And otherwise, if we have a leading character H, we're gonna add four bits, B3, B2, B1, B0, and then B tail. And that's gonna be true for hex digit HD to get the actual value of that digit. And then B3 is D shifted three mod two, B2 is D shifted two mod two, B1 is D shifted one mod two, and B0 is D shifted zero mod two. And then finally, the rest of the string has to match. All right, so now we should be able to say hex bits B, we'll change this to B just for consistency. And sure enough, the bits for, oh, that didn't work. What did we do? Oh, we said hex digits here. That was silly. Hex bits. That's better. All right. D, two, F, E, good. All right, so now we can get the bits. Now we actually have to start parsing the bits. Now it told us that each packet starts with a three bit version field and then a three bit type field. So let's start with that. We need some way to take a certain bit number, an n bit number out of the front of a bit string. So let's work on that. We're gonna say we wanna take n bits from B, producing a value V and a remaining bits BR. And 
if we're processing one bit at a time, it helps to have the accumulator for the bits that we've already taken off. So let's actually make this be a five, by, a five argument function. The, the four argument that we want to use will add an internal variable, the accumulator there, that starts out at zero. And then we have to write the accumulator version. So we're taking n bits from B with accumulator A, producing value V and final string BR. And there's going to be a couple of these. The simple version is if we're taking zero bits from B with accumulator A, and that just produces A with B's bits as the remainder. And otherwise, N must be bigger than zero. And we're going to know what the first bit is. We'll use a pattern. So now we know the first bit. And we'll say that we're going to say A1 is A times 2 plus B. We're going to shift the accumulator up and put B in. And then we'll take, oh, we need N, N minus 1, which you have to actually compute. We'll say N1 is N minus 1. Take N1, B1, A1, V, B, R. So now the result of the recursive call, because we're passing in the accumulator, can fill in the right final value for B. So now we should be able to say parse this as bits and then take three bits from B, producing a value and a bit string. And sure enough, the first three bits are 110, which is a six. Great. So that seems like that's working. So now let's do the packet header. If we have a header B and we're pulling out a version and a type with some bits remaining, then we want to take three bits from B, um, in, put them in the version, and then we'll have extra bits. And then we'll take three bits from the extra bits, and we'll put them in the type, and we'll have the final remaining bits. So now we should be able to say header B version type BR. There we go. And this one version is six, and the bits are four. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we have to parse an actual packet. And the packet type four means it's a literal value. And in a literal value, you just get a number. And a number is a sequence of five bit chunks. So let's work on that one. We'll say packet B, we're producing packet P and bits remaining, is going to start with a header. We're going to pull out those things. And then based on what the header is, we're going to parse it differently. And we said type four is a number. So we'll take B1 and we'll get number N and then uh, some bits remaining. And then we'll say P is N. there. Let's see if that works. Well, we have to write number. So let's see. We need to parse a number. And this is a lot like um, take. We're just taking five bit chunks instead of one bit chunks. So to take the number, we're taking B, producing N, and some bits remaining. And it's going to depend on whether B starts with a zero or a one. If it starts with a zero, it means that there's four more bits that come after. And those are the actual number. So We'll say take four from B, producing N and BR. Um, but if the number is one, if it begins with one, then what we want to do is take four again and put them in an the accumulator. And so actually we need an accumulator, so let's do that. And we'll say number B and BR is going to be number B zero and BR um, to put the accumulator in. And then we'll put the accumulator here. And so if we've already read A, then we're going to want to take N1, and then we're going to want to say N is A times 16 plus N1. All right. And then otherwise, we're going to read a 4-bit and continue on. So we'll do the same thing, B1. And then we'll update the accumulator. We'll say A1 is A times 16 plus N1. And then we'll say number uh, B1, A1 and br. All right, so that should handle the various chunks. So let's see. Um, that should be enough, actually. So let's see what happens if we say packet b p b r. It says, wow, you are so wrong. All right, singleton variable v. It says we're not using b, and that's fine. But I have learned to pay attention to these warnings because it's often a mistake. Uh, we forgot A entirely in this one, so that's a problem. Let's try that. Um, that looks like it's working, and we got the value 2021, which is, in fact, the value we're supposed to get for that hex packet. And then we said next, and it says false, because it can't find any way to satisfy packet with the others, because we haven't implemented the other packet formats. So let's do that. 
we have to do pbbr header b. We know we're skipping the version. And we'll say t is not four. And then if t is not four, then we need a body. And the body comes from the remaining bits and it supplies the packet and figures out what bits are remaining. All right. So the bodies have multiple forms. And let's see. The body starts with a length bit. And the length bit, if it's zero, then the next 15 bits are a length in bits of the sub packets contained. And otherwise, if length is one, the ele is 11 bits counting the sub packets, not counting bits. So, all right, so let's say body of zero followed by B, producing packets P, bytes remaining, bits remaining, is um, we need to take 15 bits from B and put that into N and save where we are. And then that's a number of bits. So we're going to need to split the remaining bits at n, after n, producing the bits for the packets and the actual bits that are remaining afterward. And then we need to parse the packets, all packets from b1, sorry, b2, into p. All right, so now we need to write those. To split a list, we have b, n, left and right sides. Um, let's see, well, sometimes it just jumps over there, I don't know why. If we're splitting B with zero bits, then you end up with nothing on the one side and a full list on the left, on the right. So then if we're splitting a larger number, we're going to say N is bigger than zero, and we'll know what the first bit is. We'll say this is B or B1, and then we'll say this is going to be, and that, that bit is going to go over here. And then we'll say this works if n1 is n minus 1. Stop that. And you can split b1 at n1 to produce bl and br. All right, so that should be the definition of splitting to cut that slice of bits. And then we need to do all packets. And to do all packets for a bit string and a packet list, um, we're going to want to just keep grabbing packets until we run out of bits. So if there's no bits, that's an empty list. And otherwise, let's see, we want to bring a packet, so bpb1, and then we want to do all packets on the remainder, p1. And so we just need to make this list be p followed by p1. And it looks like that might be it. So let's see if we can parse some more packets. That one was still right, that's the 2021. And then we found another packet with the bit length. That was the one we were working on. It's a 10 and a 20. And that was all we can parse. That's fine. This is good. So now we'll do the other body. Uh, if it begins with a 1, remember, we take 11 bits. And then that's the number of packets to parse. So we'll say pa parse from B, N packets into P with bits remaining. All right. So then we have to write packets. To do packets for B, N, P, bits remaining. Well, to start with, if we're being asked for zero packets, that's going to be an empty list and have the same bits come back out. And otherwise, N must be bigger than zero, and one is going to be N minus one as usual. We'll parse one packet out of B, and then we'll save where those bits are, and then we'll do packets recursively on B1 and N1 and P1 and bits remaining, and then we just need to put the list back together because we got the packet and then we got the remaining ones. All right, let's try that. Singleton variables, B1. I don't even see what it's talking about. There isn't a B1 there. Let's try that again. Still unhappy. Oh, this B1. Yes, that is a problem, thank you. All right. Okay, let's see, 2021, good, 10, 20, good, and then 1, 2, 3, all right, that part get parsed, so that's great. And then this one looks like it's a very nested 15, and some other stuff, some other stuff, some other stuff, and even this giant packet parsed okay. Some very interesting numbers there. Um, okay, it's showing us the bits. We don't really care about the bits anymore. Let's move that into parse. Packet B, P, B, R. So this is P, B, R. P, B, R. 
All right. There we go. Now we don't have to look at those bit strings. Great. All right. So actually, I think we've parsed the entirety of the packets now. So now we can actually do what the problem is asking us to do with them. It says to start off with just summing all the versions from the packets. So we've been ignoring the versions. Um, and we've been returning these nice nested data structures. But if we're just going to try to get the version sum, we could build the nested data structures and then walk them. Or we could just return the sum directly from the parser. And so we're going to do that. So here we get a version. And that's what's going to be returned. We're going to ignore the number. And so that one's done. And then here, we're going to want a version and the type. And then we're going to get a version sum uh, v1 out of the body. And then we're going to say the payload is v plus v1. Or I guess v1 is going to be a list. So we want the sum. Uh, let's say sum v1 into s. And then p is v plus s. So now we need to write sum of a list. Sum of empty list is 0. Sum of uh, v or v1 into s is sum of v1 into s1. And then s is v plus s1. All right, that looks like a sum, maybe. So let's see. Uh, this is now 6. Presumably that was version 6. I think that's what I remember. Version 9. 14, we don't know what those should be, but this one, version sum 16, version sum 12, version sum 23, version sum 31. All right, this is good. And then the input is 920. All right, let's see what happens. 920. Submit. That is the right answer. All right. Now we have to actually interpret those other types. And there's other types, 4 was a literal, remember, and now we have 0 is sum, 1 is product, 2 is min, 3 is max, 5 is greater than, 6 is less than, and 7 is equal to. And these last three are always just two sub-packets. So again, we could build a parse tree and then evaluate it, or we could just change the parser to do what we needed to do. And we're just going to do that. So the number n is back to being the result of this. We're ignoring the version again, ignoring this version again. And then in this body, we're going to get back the same list of the values of the other packets. But then we have to do the right operation for t with v1 and s. Um, actually, v1 and p, because we're not doing that version anymore. So now I just needed to find the operator. So operator with type and the value list and the output. I'm going to keep calling it p, I guess. Let's see. Um, actually, we're probably just going to write more than one of these. So let's just write a whole bunch. If it's 0, then it's going to be sum v of p. If it's 1, 2, 3, we skip 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. So 1 was product min max, OK? Product vp, min vp max vp, and then this one was greater, and it was only two things in the list. So let's just fix that right there so it's easier. Greater avp, and then this was also two things. It was less and equal, less avp, equal avp. All right, so now we just need to write all of those. It's not too bad. Product of an empty list, we'll say, is 1. Product of v or v1 into p is, we do a product of v1 into p1, and then p is v times p1. All right, min. Um, min of v or v1 is m. If the min of v1 is m, and v is less, no, greater than m, so that m stays the min. And let's tell it, using this cut operator, if you get this far, don't try to do other mins, because then we can just say that the min of v or anything else is v. And let's do max, 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 less than. All right. Um, let's see if those work. Oh, I guess we have to write the rest. All right, fine. Um, but I want new test cases because we have these nice test cases here. 
So let's put these in instead of the ones we were using before. We'll say hex of that. And then all right. And let's just get rid of these. I don't think we need these anymore. Perfect. Right, we still need to write greater. All right, fine, we'll write greater. Where were we? There we are. Greater of a, b, one is true if a is bigger than b. And cut the search. Otherwise, greater can be zero. And then we'll do the same thing for less, a, b, one, a is less than B, and then cut, less underscore underscore zero. And finally, equal AB1, A equals B, cut, equal underscore underscore zero. Now, m many prolog programs make extensive use of the cut because it bounds the non-determinism, but for parsing these packets, we don't have that much non-determinism to begin with. Uh, what did I do? I forgot the dots. And so we're not using the cut operator very much, and that's fine. I kind of suspect that you end up with very deterministic uh, prologue if it's anything near efficient anyway. All right, um, so this is supposed to be three, and it is, that's good. This is supposed to be 54, and it is, that's good. Minimum of 789 is seven, okay. Max of 789 is nine, good. One, because five is less than 15, okay, good. Zero because five is not greater than 15, okay, good. Zero because five is not equal to 15, okay, good. And one, all right. And then this, wow, the final input is that giant value. And we got our stars. Have a nice day.